Well, hello, hello, hello. Can everybody hear me okay? Give me a 5x5 five five again. And we should be... Uh can you see me and hear me? Those are the two biggest things. Well, you can't see me yet, but you probably can hear me. Hopefully you can. Let me know if you can't. 
And then once I get a good confirmation that you can hear me, we are going to go for it. We got a 5x5. Five five. Good deal. 5x5. Five five. No camera. Yeah. We don't have that camera on just yet. Why don't we have that camera on? Really weird. Israel, what's up? Just working on a few things here, folks. Let's uh, get the show on the road. I don't know if this is... Um See if I can jump back in the flight deck here. It's not what I wanted to do. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 317. Our flight time will be roughly two hours. Please note the cabin door is now closed. We ask that you make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your larger devices are now shut down and stowed. If you have not already, please fasten your seatbelt and verify it is low and tight across your lap. Your tray tables and seatbacks must be in the full upright and locked position for departure. Flight attendants, please prepare cabin for departure and cross checks. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the stream. We are here. We got to shut the door. Hang on just a really quick. I'm going to gonna close the door. There are several emergency exits on this aircraft. To familiarize yourself with the emergency exits on this aircraft, Cut please that. refer to That's the safety card in the seat back pocket in front of you. In some cases, your nearest exit might be behind you. If we need to evacuate the aircraft, there is lighting on the floor to guide you towards the exit. In the event that the cabin loses pressure, an oxygen mask will drop right in front of you. To start the flow of oxygen, pull the mask towards you. Okay, hold on, folks. We are in uh, 240. And uh, it's an old airplane, but uh, it's a good one. 700 out of here today. Yes, that's exactly right. I'll show you, I'll tell you, I'll talk to you in a minute after this announcement is going on, because otherwise I'm talking over the top. Firmly on the right not good. only when exiting the aircraft. If your life vest does not inflate automatically, blow into the mouth. Oh, she's talking. I'm going to go ahead and release the chocks. Let's call up GSX and then we'll we'll do I'll give you a brief and a rundown. Put your arms into the strap and hug the cushion to your chest. Please securely stow all personal items. Make sure your seatbelts are fastened and seat backs and tray tables are all in their full upright position. We remind you that this is a non-smoking flight, and that includes vaping, tampering with, disabling, or destroying the smoke detectors located in the lavatories is strictly prohibited by law. All of this information and more can be found on the safety card located in the seat That's back in doing. front of you. All she's Please doing. Reading this and letting a cabin member know if you have any questions. Thank you for flying with us again, and we hope you enjoy your flight. All right. All right, good to go. So what we're going to do... Hello, Captain. Is if you didn't know, I've got the thing prepped. We've got it refueled, ready to go. We got passengers on board. We got 143 packs, so almost a full boat. Um, bags are a little light, so we're looking at we're pretty light today, folks. So 115,500 pounds total. 
uh, as I put get ready to hook up the tow bar. I'm gonna uh, just let everybody know who's here hanging out. We got Thibs, Sim Gaming. What's going on, Stellar FS? How are you? Denali's checking in as well. Gary, what's going on from down under? Gary's starting to get in the summer here. He's getting the spring. That's for sure. Uh, who else we got? Israel, how are you? And then Israel says, what do you think about the current 737 PMDG version for FS? FS? It's pretty good. Um, I'm expecting 12 left on the landing, but we'll see how it goes when we get a little bit closer. That's DJ Met. How are you? SS, wow, the hydraulics are already on. Yes, uh, we are skipped the pre-flight. I've already pre-flighted the aircraft. I got here about an hour ago. I was able to pre-flight it, get ready to go for you guys uh, so we could get a quick push and, and run. I already got the clearance, so we're good. Locking. Especially near that runway overrun and departure. <laughs> uh, 242 just got repainted. Okay. Love the MD-80 video yesterday. Yes. Especially the takeoff. It was very hair-raising. That takeoff was an interesting one. That was for sure. That got my hair standed up, just like I'm sure it did for yours. All right. I'm going to go ahead and push back. We're going to actually go nose to the right today. And we want to go tail to the left. So we're going to go like that, but we're going to wait. So we're just going to wait on the parking brake. I'm going to give you a rundown really quick, and then we're going to get going. Um, weather is getting better now, and I'm so glad. Good deal. Can't wait to fly. Good. Now, hopefully, if I have time, I could revisit the cruise portion of the stream. Okay, yeah, we'd love to have you. All right, let me give you a rundown of the, of the flight here, and I will be right back with a quick announcement. Let's do this. And folks from the flight deck, welcome to uh, flight 317, non-stop service over to Cancun. Uh, we should have a gate out of the gate here in about a minute. Once we're airborne, an hour and 53 minutes, uh, 84 degrees in Cancun, few clouds. Should be a nice and smooth ride here, a little bit bumpy during climb out, uh, but it should not be okay. It should be okay the rest of the flight. Thanks for watching, sit back, relax, and enjoy. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to the FSBN channel. push all engines clear start at will okay here we go on the pushback we've already done our checklist too if you didn't know now you know apu bleed coming on should get some good duck pressure coming in yeah yeah all right here we go on the pushback let's fire it up wow look at that i can't see anything see why is he doing this to me why are they doing this to me? I said the other way around. I want the nose to the right. Oh, we got an aircraft pushing as well. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tune to 122. Let's go fire number two. Number two coming to ground. You guys watch the engine indications there. And then uh, I'll go ahead and tune to 122 decimal eight. Don't worry. That's not the, uh, that's the number one. It's so hard to see it. Okay, here comes the fuel. It's like really hard for me to see. It is so hard for me. There we go. To see that, sorry. That was kind of a crappy engine start. 
<clears throat> looking down the whole time. I hope I don't run into you. If I do, I will tell them to stop, like right now. Hang on. Oh, good. Sorry, I cut you off. All right, we're going to set the park brake. We're going to get out of here quick so we can get out of his way. Park brake coming set. Park brake coming set. Cockpit to ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. Yes, we do. You can release us. Okay, while they do that, we're going to go ahead and isolate, ventilate. Packs on high, get that going. <clears throat> we're going to start number one while we can. Number two is coming to continuous. Fuel in. One more thing I'm going to do. Unlocking gear. <clears throat> I gotta really do something with this, um, this, this traffic, you know? We really gotta do something about that. That's not gonna work for me. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass been removed. Left is clear. Right is clear. Okay, Jen, it's not, it's not on yet. There we go. Now it is. We're gonna, gonna turn off the APU. We're going to sling up the overhead panel here. We're going to throw the pro -peed on. Go ahead and throw our engines. Hydraulics. APU's off. Bleed's off. Okay, coming back down here. That's on left side. One more taxi lights on. Flaps one. Checklist coming out. Clear that. All right, let's hope everything runs smooth here. All right, good to go. Okay, electrical generators are on, propeed is on, anti-ice is off, flight controls are free, flaps, CD use is one, we have one, indicates, and it's got a green light on there. Transponder is on TARA, ta uh, taxi checklist is complete. Let's call them up. Houston traffic, southwest 2, taxi runway 22, two, Houston. Okay, one thing I need to do, folks, I'm going to lock this really quick. I'm going to take a peek over here. We'll pull up our taxi chart here. Figure out where we're going, what we're doing, and how we're doing it. So we're going to come around this side of town all the way down. Oh, I know. it's. I feel it's something's going on here. Hang on. I got to lock this because I could feel the controls are off, and I know why. That's because everything's on the MD-80. So the rudder's got to change to... PMDG, the throttle is PMDG, and the yoke has got to be changed to PMDG. I'm going to go F, oops, sorry, F11, and now we're good to go. Now it's got the PMDG. Houston traffic southwest, 305, taxi and runway 22 via Zebra Yankee. All right, here we go, on our way to Cancun. I hope you all had a great week. I know this is a really quick way for me to start right off the gate but uh, like I said I had some time I had some time with um, at about an hour I usually never get that time on a Friday but we did today so we're taking full advantage of that time and maximize everything now this Houston I believe is freeware on flightsim.to until somebody actually makes one this is a pretty darn good scenery. I've been super happy with it. Um, not too bad. So let's see here. We're going to go ahead and taxi to Zulu. All the way down to Zulu to Yankee. How's that? Zulu, Yankee. And I think we had one, uh, one of our Southwest folks already fly this leg.
All right, let's go ahead and do a, a tenant notification. So I'm like, anytime I look away, I'm so afraid I'm going to lose the track IR again. And it really sucks when that happens, let me tell you. It's not good. That's not the checklist. Recall complete. For takeoff, here we go. Parch plan not required. Tenant notification complete. Electrical generators are on. Anti ice is off. Don't need it. Packs as required. We'll check the packs and bleeds one one quick. I checked them already, but we'll, we'll check it again. Start switches are left in continuous. APUs off. Flaps 1-1 one, one with a green light. See that right there? 1-1 one, one with a green. And we are going to hold right here. Just take a peek at the radar really quick until we get one. Start levers are idle. Recall is complete. Before takeoff check is complete. Let me just look at the radar before we end up going. Uh, and by the way, yesterday... I just flew in from uh, Atlanta, so it was, um, where are we, Texas? Just give me a second. <laughs> I'm going to look. And I'll get to your questions and everything after we take off and we get this airplane pointed in the right direction. All right, we got some weather. It's to the north of us, so I'm not too concerned. Everything to the south of us is okay. No centers online. And let's take a peek outside. I think we're ready to go. Let's do this. Ah, uh, just one really quick thing. There we go. All right, let's go. Hey, Houston traffic southwest two, take in runway two two, Houston. All right, take a quick peek. Looks good. Lights, camera, action. Right. One more, I'm going to go ahead and reach for it. And then the second one, logo, doesn't need to be on. There we go. Nobody's coming in on 2 2, that's a good thing. We're going to go um, the piece. We're pretty much going to go straight out. How's that? I'm arming the auto throttle. I'm going to bring them up to 40 right about now. All right, PAX bleeds are set. We're ready to go here. And we're going, Toga. Now we're going to climb one profile just because we're so dang light. Okay, I got 80 knots, somewhere to go ahead and cross. Trick, throttle is. Traffic clear. southwest 305 is winding up and waiting, runway 22, Houston. We'll go. Rotate. Positive rate of climb. Gear coming up. You're up. Come on, bird. What are you doing? Bumping. We're bumping. That's what we're doing. Okay, we're going to bug up 1,000 feet on the bug. Bug it up. I'm going to go ahead and get some speed. The airplane's going to start pitching down. Traffic Southwest 305, departing runway 22, Houston Hobby. Okay, now we're waiting for the flap up retraction, which we've got the altitude. We don't have the speed yet. Now we do. Flaps up. We get the airplane stable, ready to go. We're on vectors, right? Go flip to the legs page, and we're going to go right to peace. I'll start our roll out there right now.
We're climbing all the way up, folks. There's the 5,000 level off, but we're going to keep on climbing. Uh, this is manual flight, if you're wondering. I'm not on autopilot yet. Just letting the airplane fly. I'm letting it do its thing. There we go. It wants to hold 5,000, but I'm not letting it. And we'll go ahead and cancel that when I get when I get rolled out. We'll start increasing speed, which I'm going to do right now. Still on a good climb. Engine's coming up. We'll get the climb one off here in a minute. Uh, let's keep coming. Now we're in the soup. Straight up IFR now. We're still manual flight, if you're wondering. We haven't uh, engaged the autopilot yet. I like to be level, level stable climbing out when we uh, go ahead and engage it. There's nothing wrong with engaging it now. I just, I'm going to wait. I'll engage it right now. Okay, so I'm going to lock this. And then let's go ahead and come over here. We're going to go Command, LNAV. And VNAV, that is set. All right, let's clean this thing up. Gear, we should be going direct to peace. See how the airplane's turning? It's going to intercept that piece and then come in. We're plus 20. I mean, if I'm painting radar, we should be, you know, that storm is to the north of us. So I'm looking at the storm now. It's all in the north, so I'm not too concerned with it. I am going to cancel climb one after I finish this up. We'll turn those two lights off, taxi lights off. I'm going to go ahead and um, now delete climb one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now passed 10,000 feet. You may turn on larger portable electronic devices. Okay, this is also 10,000. Please keep your seatbelt fastened throughout the duration of the flight and do not form a line near the laboratory. This aircraft is equipped with onboard Wi-Fi. If you wish to connect to the Wi-Fi, you will be required to pay a small fee. We do offer complimentary in-flight TV thanks to our partners. Connect to the Wi-Fi to find out more information. That well, looks good, folks. I'm looking for turbulence. That's why I'm kind of got the, my head out the window here. Just want to see if we're bouncing around. We're, we're pretty good right now. All right, that's it. We're going to go ahead and resume normal climb here after I'm just slowing it down just a little bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and punch it because it looks good for turbulence. Okay, pressurization. Uh, looking good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the uh, engine start switches. We don't need those on right now. Start switches are off. APU is off. And climb is complete. I'm just going to look at the packs. Good. Bleeds are good again. Climb check is complete. That's it. Nice climb. Love it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and turn off some... Uh, of those for you. All right, let me get to your uh, comments here. Is Cancun a holiday destination in the states? Yeah, it's in um, Gary. It's in the. It's actually in the. Uh, it's in Mexico, so that's where Cancun is. It's in Mexico. Just we're going to be our route of flight is just going to be over um, the. Basically, we're going to be shooting the Gulf of Mexico straight across. I could show you the route if it helps. I'll show you kind of where we are. Let me go ahead and lock up the... Um, I always forget to start this, and I shouldn't, but I always do. Okay. It's one of those things that when you come here early, you get to... You get to um, you know, do this quick. All right, so there's our route of flight. You can see it kind of takes us from Houston, which is here in the states in Texas. It's one of the biggest states in the United States. And we're going to be flying straight across the Gulf of Mexico here to the Yucatan Peninsula. That's what they call this. And then we're going right to Cancun, which is a holiday destination for those folks in Mexico. Um, let's see. Anything noteworthy here? I've already looked at the notams and everything. Um, like I said, it's about an hour and 53 minutes by, by the time we're done here. Should be pretty good. The winds were, you know, winds were looking good out of out of here. You could see kind of where we're going. 
it looks like we have really good temperatures too, about 82 degrees, really nice. But you can see those winds kicking a little bit, that's surface winds, so let's go ahead and pull up some altitude, and let's get all the way up to about, uh, let's go higher than that, 34,000 feet. See, we're going to get a nice tailwind push out of Houston here. Uh, nice tailwinds all the way up pretty much until we start coming across and we'll get to the crosswind. So it's going to be tailwind, change to the crosswind, and then we'll land over here in Coz uh, Cozumel, in um, Cancun. Now, we do have Cozumel as a um, as our backup today. We do have an alternate because it's forecasted to be thunderstorms in the area and low scud kind of stuff. So we'll be watching that for sure. Hopefully if that was um, answered your question and you can, you know, seeing is believing. That's better. We're flying the desert goal. No, I wish we were. Um, oh, they're flying the desert gold. Yeah. Oh, you're a 738 behind you. It is the model matching. It's not you. It's me. I got to install it. Um, kind of I didn't install it so you know I'm sorry about that but I need to install that's the next thing I'm working on we got GSX installed we got the 800 installed and now we're doing um, this we do have scenery at this airport yeah, I kind of featured it last week with you when we flew the MD-80 into Cosmel and today the drink of today is bubbly blackberry bubbly and that's just sparkling water so bottoms up with that. All right, DJ Matt One. He says, "I'm behind you. You show me in a yeah, 2,000 for smoking laboratories. If you had 2,000, would be the first class. Yeah, that's exactly right. The weather is getting better now. I'm so glad. Good. Okay, read that. Good to go. Model matching is always hilarious. Yeah, I gotta work on that. DJ Matt, no heart. Nope, not yet. Have a good flight, fellas. I'm about 40 minutes from touchdown. Good deal. 40 miles from touchdown. Good deal. SWA passed the 90% mark on repaints. Yep. Okay." Which is a shame. I saw in Atlanta, I saw a few aircraft that uh, were not painted in the heart yet. And it made my heart happy. Because I still like my old school. My old school airplane is fantastic. Like this is beautiful. Love that paint. Think it's great. And they did a great job on this. Look at how beautiful the... the this is a beautiful model. I'm sorry. I don't care who you say. I don't care what you say. He did a great job repainting this aircraft. Looks great. It's fantastic. It's going to get that whole thing in there. Yep. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. I'm going to kind of pick myself up here just a little bit so you can kind of see out the window. And maybe just drop it back just a touch so we can kind of see outside a little bit. Oh, we got a fuel light on. I wasn't paying attention. We ran those fuel pumps dry, I guarantee it, which is a no-no. Pyre up denied already. And that's it, folks. It's pretty much straight on now. Okay, let's get to your Cancun holiday destination in the States. Yes, it used to be when it was safe. <laughs> Cosmel is better. We have Cosmel as an alternate. Uh, Leda, how are you? Hi, please shout out. Actually, am I saying that right? Is it Letita? Letita? Nayamoda? Uh, where are you from? Checking in. If I'm getting that name, I have a I have a tendency of butchering names, so I, I apologize. I can butcher Michelle and Michael, no problem. Letitia, maybe. SS is go around time. Toga, yes, sir. Final is clear. Here we go. Yes. Runway ver 22 verified. Solid rotation. Thank you. Oh, Pops. What's going on, Pops? Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Keeping it quiet for the residents, huh? Yes. Good deal. Good stuff. Look forward to it. Hey, hey, Tyler. What's up? Tyler, we got to get some flying done, man. I'm, do I'm doing... I'm doing the coastal run up to New York this week. Well, probably this weekend. We got Monday off, so I'll be I'll be flying that route. And I'm happy to say I was away on business. Let's see. I was in Roanoke, Virginia this week. 
and I knocked out one, two, three, four. I knocked out five tests. So honestly, folks, we are so close. Once I get the last test done, we're going to be hiring for Coastal. So the, I'm opening the doors and we're letting you in. So that is coming. Guarantee it. We made about just the two of us flying, or well, um, then Cody. We made about six hundred thousand dollars, which is good. We got to pay for that MD eighty, <laughs> a little bit, not too much, not all of it, just about a million bucks. Uh, let's see here. The only thing I really love about the heart livery is the fact that they returned the heart because it represents yes, yes, and wheel hubs. Yes. Yeah, I plan on it soon. I'm buried in the books. Oh, yeah, no problem, man. I'm just saying for me, I'm going to be doing the uh, the Bar Harbor run up up north. And I've got the website updated, so I'm going to go ahead and update the website tonight. Get it all loaded with our new destinations that we've got for the doors. So for our opening, I guess grand opening, if you want to call it, we've got some great destinations for folks. that are, You know, it, it's best of both worlds. A little bit of long legs, a little bit of short legs. It's kind of the best there for now until we get uh, going. Oh, we passed 18,000 a long time ago. Are you kidding me? And that. We are in RVSM territory, folks. Get with it, Jason. I just had to shut off my rest of my lights. Anyway, that's always fun. That's a cool view. I love that view. I thought that view was pretty sweet. I don't know what that was, and I don't like it, so I'm not going to touch it. How's that? Not going to even go there. I'm just going to hit end. Oh, I'm not going to hit even end. I'm just going to go like this. <laughs> just, we're not doing that again. We've got Jacksonville centers up, Albuquerque center. You know what's really cool? I got to tell you a couple things. I flew in an A321 yesterday. In a four-hour flight from Atlanta to Salt Lake. In the cattle car. And, uh, man, that thing climbs like a pig. It's a sluggish piece of crap. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't climb great at all. It took us... I timed it. The climb actually took us a... About 45 minutes to get to 32,000 feet. I could not believe it. 32,000 feet. Oh my gosh. All right, compare that to a 757. There is no comparison, folk, folks. Holy smokes! <laughs> Holy cow! Hold on. That is awesome. No joke. All right, so my son was like, I'm like, what are you going to be for Halloween? That's awesome. Come in here. Come in here. Open the other door. Open the other door. We're live right now, but you got it on top. So he said it's going to be a surprise. Here, hold on, Isabella. Hold on, don't. Yeah. Yeah, just don't trip on this wire. You can't make it. Hold on, let me see something. Hang on. <laughs> Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, that is so cool. That is the coolest costume I've ever seen. So he said, Dad, it's a surprise. And I'm like, well, what are, what are you going to be? <laughs> That's awesome. It's a giant squid. <laughs> that is cool. I would, I'm would. i going to wear a huge shark. Could I get a shark? <laughs> Was there a shark? You got to order me a shark. That would be awesome. I love it. I love it. You want to shut the doors for me? <laughs> that thing is huge. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That was cool. So he said, it's a surprise. It's a surprise because they ordered it. They were looking and shopping and they ordered it. And I went, he loves the ocean like me. He's a, he's a big ocean guy. So it's, that is awesome. I got to say, 
That is probably the coolest costume I've ever seen. It's just monstrous. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Thibs said, I wish uh, Navigraph would come up with something that would allow us to see other tracker on movable maps. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Well, I got to tell you, something's in the books for that. So hopefully that's a feature they will come up with. I think so. I'm hoping so. It won't. It probably won't be in that first released, but I think it's on the roadmap. So I don't know when, where, why, how. I don't know, but um, for sure something like that's coming. I hope. Without committing to anything, as I can, because I don't know. All right. So that's <laughs> so cool. That was really cool, folks. We're leaving the thunderstorms behind us. That's the end of the storms, and we should be good to go to cruise now. We're climbing through 33,000. It's just a monstrous thing. So I'm going to go look for a shark. If he's going to be that, I'm going to be a shark. Big old blow-up shark would be fun. <laughs> I don't know. I love Halloween, though. Halloween's fun. It's good. But they're getting, they're getting to the age right now where, like, you know, like trick or treating. Like my daughter's like, eh, I don't know. She's getting to be thirteen, and you know, to the point where like, is trick or treating still fun? And I'm like, Yeah, it is. Come on, we can't, we can't not do that. We're going. So, anyway, that's cool. That was a good surprise. <laughs> All right, SS. We'll see you tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. You can always watch the landing. See how bad I botch it. And um, it should be good to go. That land, we've got some good room there in um, Cancun. At least, hopefully, we won't be unstable like we were last week, folks, where we had to do a go around. Um, and where do we got? Ah, it's a 9,100 feet of runway. It's plenty of runway. Plenty of runway. Great real estate there. We're not going to grease it in, though. We'll, we'll put it on the mark and stop the airplane. Squish mellows? No. <laughs> what are squish mellows? I do not know what that is. But I'm sure you're going to tell me. Okay, by the way, here's a rumor. I would love... I don't know if it's true. You've probably heard the same rumor. But if PMDG comes with a 757... I mean, a legit 757. If PMDG does it, it's going to be good. But if they do come up with one, we're buying it. Because we are definitely flying that airplane. It's one of my favorite airplanes. And I don't have much... I don't have any time in it. Because there's really no good 757... I don't even say Captain Sim. They're not even the same ballpark. Um, I'm looking for a legit 757 to fly. That would be really fun. Because I love that airplane. And Delta has tons of them. And I don't know why they put a 321 on this route. The last time I flew this route was uh, Atlanta to Salt Lake. It was on a 75. And the climb, we were up at altitude and probably... 20 minutes we were at altitude 20-30 minutes we were there um, and we weren't no 32,000 we were high and that, that 7.5 is just a beast oh such performance really hyper high performing aircraft alright so once we get to climb let's check some fuel status and stuff like that Okay, I've got to look this up now. Now you've you've piqued my interest. Let's see this. Um, Squish Mellow's Rocket Shark. <laughs> this I got to see. <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> 
Okay, it's a plush. Um, I'll show it. I'll show it to you so everybody can, can see it. This is what we're talking about right here. That is so cool. That's Coastal Airways mascot right there. This 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 pillow. <laughs> that's awesome. Now that's pretty cool. You gotta admit, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right, here comes thirty-eight thousand for thirty-nine. It seems pretty good in terms of uh, weather here, and it's really nice and good. No turbulence to be had. Go ahead and turn the dang seatbelt sign off. Let's do this. Maybe. Welcome to Victor Cruising Altitude. We're going to go ahead and turn off the seatbelt sign right now. We ask that you remain seated. You keep those seatbelts fastened just in case if we hit any unexpected rough air. We appreciate you watching us tonight. That's Swab Operations Channel. Go ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. And check us out at uh, virtualswa.com. Uh, as we get a little closer to the airport, we'll let you know on the weather. However, we ask that you All right, seatbelt signs off. We're good. Can you guys hear that announcement I did? I love it. <laughs> so that's awesome. So what you'll have to do, Tyler, you're going to have to take a picture of that thing next to you. Like, put it next to your sim or something when you fly. Take a picture of it. I'm going to post it on Instagram. That would that would be awesome. Maybe we'll do that. We'll take our little mascot. And we'll move them all over the place. Everywhere we go, we'll just take them out and put them there and take a picture. Uh, so, cool. A little update on Coastal, by the way. I've got bag tags ordered for our pilots, and they're coming. I had... Hang on. i got to reach. i got to reach. Big reach. Hang on. Oh. Shoot, I don't know if I'm going to get it. Okay. There we go. Um, so it's going to look like that. Except it's going to say, you know, Coastal Airways. And then it's going to have Miami on it. And it'll say Flight Crew. Um, I'm super excited to see what, what uh, how it comes out. And all of our pilots, at least the first ten pilots are going to get it. I don't, I don't know if I could do it on all of our pilots because that would be a crap load of money. But... Our first 10 pilots, for sure, will get that plus. They're going to get stickers. All my pilots will get a sticker, which is a crew sticker. Because if you go through training and you, you, you work hard, you're going to get that crew sticker on there, which is cool. Again, and a certificate. You know, a certificate of completion. But just know hiring is right around the corner. I'm serious. If I, can, I think we can get it done... Um, I would assume by the end of next week. So I think we could foresee hiring here in two weeks. You know, early, maybe mid-September, we'll be hiring people on to start the process. And then I've got to do the other half while they're going through the beginning. I could do the other half of the training, which I'm almost done with now. So pretty cool this way we won't be waiting on me or anything like that which i think is is great but i'm super excited to get that finally off my plate and done it's just a major it's a major undertaking it's never been done before so you know it's a lot it's a lot going on there so anyway well cool <laughs> that was a cool costume you gotta admit that it's pretty cool. He's going to... Okay, gotcha. All right, so we're flying right now, and let's have a little fun. Okay, so we're going to have some fun today. If you're thinking, well, what do we do up at cruise altitude? There's nothing to do. Well, I'm going to point to the panel, and I'm going to point to a light, and we're going to do something. Now, I, while I'm doing this, I want you to think where we're going to go next week. Okay. What are we flying next week? Are we doing a Southwest flight? Are we going to do a coastal flight? What are we going to do? Are we doing an 80 again? You tell me. How about this? Let's get to a good system. All right. Let's say we've got a Yon Amper light on right here. This goes Amber, Yon Amper. And we're at cruise altitude right now, so we're flying along. 
Bam! Master Caution comes on, says Yawn Amper. Now what? What do we do, right? We're going to consult the QRH, and we're going to drill down to our QRH and find out what to do with that. It's probably a hydraulic thing. It could be a flight control issue. And let's see if that's got it. It sure is. It's a flight control issue. So the Yawn Amper light comes on. What can we do? Can we fly? Do we have to? Is it an emergency? And let's read about it. There's a couple of things that happens with the Yawn Amper light on. Now, if you're wondering what the Yawn Amper is, is that swept, um, swept back aircraft, a little um, aerodynamics here. Okay, I think I caught up with everybody. Anyway, when you have a, sweet, a swept back wing, let me go outside if I can. And I'll show you. So you see this wing here? You see how swept back it is? It, it's swept back. It's called a swept back wing. Well, any type of wing like this or aircraft that has a swept wing like that has a tendency to do isolations. And it's called Dutch roll. So it, it's a little bit of a Dutch roll. And... Um, I'll show you what it is here after I get in the flight deck. All right, so a Dutch roll is like this. The airplane wants to turn, and it wants to roll like this and yaw. All right, it's called a Dutch roll. It, it just kind of wants to do this we'll all the time. It wants to kind of roll like this a little bit with and yaw, and just like kind of walk. For a small if you wish to make an additional purchase, we only accept credit cards. So that's called a Dutch roll, and the yaw damper will help dampen that a little bit um, so that's kind of what this thing does it, it dampens that 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 yaw tendency it's still happening but it's very small it's very small so let's read it we have a failure of the yaw damper rate gyro or a failure of the yaw damper actuator loss of electrical power for more than two um, seconds and then we have the SMYD 1 and 2 internal foil, which is basically a computer. Alright, that controls it. So, the Yawn Amper is not required for CAT 2 and 3 operations. And that's good. So, if we're in flight, what can we do? And let me read about this. And is there a gauge that shows you the Yawn Amper? That's it. See this right here? This is gauge. Let's see if we can go a little closer. I'll show you kind of the system on the Yawn Amper. And you could kind of see as I zoom in on this thing. Okay, this actually shows us the position of the the rudder. And the rudder in this aircraft is massive. This is a huge barn door in the back of this airplane that has a lot of control uh, of the aircraft in terms of roll. This airplane, I could almost flip this airplane just on the rudder. All right, If I smash the rudder in, it could come right over the top and invert us if, if we don't correct it. All right, so the rudder is very powerful on this aircraft. So the SMYD, it monitors this system. It kicks the yaw damper switch. As soon as the yaw dampening is needed, the yaw damper does not respond to the command. The yaw damper switch moves to the off position, and the yaw damper amber light illuminates. That's just like when you're doing a, a realignment, and you hit enter. That's what happens to the yaw damper, right? It kicks off. If you ever wondered that, that's probably why. In flight, if it happens in flight, this occurs nearly immediately after losing hydraulic system B pressure. If it's on the ground when hydraulic system B pressure is not pressurized, the SMYD can also trip the yaw damper switch in windy conditions for the same reason. Interesting, huh? When the hydraulic A system is still working, the hydraulic B system is lost. Both main and standby yaw dampers are inoperative. If both hydraulic systems fail, the standby hydraulic system powers the standby yaw damper after placing both flight control switches to the standby rudder. That's what's up on the overhead. So if you look on the overhead, you have the standby rudder switch. This is the standby rudder. So you're looking at possibly a hydraulic issue, maybe, maybe not. It could be electrical as well. So we don't know. It's one of those two things. I'm going to throw this on the bat switch here. Okay. Um... 
So what do you do? It's basically nothing. <laughs> I mean, we can look at it. Let's let's take a look at the. Um, I'm just gonna look at the uh, QRH really quick to just see that was what I was looking at was just kind of a, a an index of that. But let's go ahead and take a look at the QRH and let's go into the QRH now and have a quick peek on the Yon Amber. If I can get there, I think it's here, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe. Alright. I do have it um, in a format. I'm going to kind of get you this. Ah, let me do a find here. It's just so much easier. When I can't, when you can't do a find on a PDF, I'm kind of a pain in the neck. So give me a second. Let me do yaw damper. Let's see what we got. Zero results. That's not good. 20 results. All right, let's see what we got. Nope. 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 Yep. Yacht Amber. All right, let's do this. And I'm going to show you really quick. Hopefully I'm not boring you, but I'm going to show you that Yacht Amber. So... Here we go. So the yawn amper is up ahead. The yawn amper light comes on. Now what? The condition. The yawn amper is disengaged. One. Yawn amper switch is off and then on. Okay. So you're going to throw the switch to the off position. If it's not off, if, or throw it on. If the yawn amper light extinguishes, you're good to go. If it stays illuminated, throw the switch to the off position. Go to step number three. Avoid areas of predicted moderate or severe turbulence. If turbulence is encountered... A passenger becomes effective, comfort becomes affected. Reduce the airspeed and or descend to a lower altitude. Do not exceed flaps 30. Isn't that interesting? And that's the end. And the reason, why do you think that is? I'm going to actually let you think, why can't we exceed flaps 30 with the yawn amper? Disengaged. Any ideas? What are your thoughts? I'm going to hypothesize with this one as well. But I want to hear your thoughts on this before I chime in. So why can't we do that? Why can't we operate past flaps 30 with the yawn amper on? Off. Gary says, this is very interesting to know. Well, that's good, Gary. I'm glad, uh, I'm, glad I'm semi-useful to this conversation. Um... Okay, we're right smack dab in the middle, almost about, um, just looking on the, the route we're on, we're on L208, and we are in the airspace, I believe, whose airspace is this? Oh my goodness gracious, great balls of fire, alright, I don't even know. But we didn't get called, right? I wasn't, did I miss a call? Nope. Good to go all the way in, it looks like. And I'll get a, go ahead and get a weather update as we're kind of coming closer. And we'll do a fuel burn update as well. we got a nice tailwind kicking up. Like I said, we're going to have a, good, a pretty good tailwind across the board here. Well, I don't want to do that, Jace. The passenger comfort right now, they're at 81%. Getting a little turbulence there. We should let them know. Um, they're 81%. That's not what I want to see. What are they? Mad? What are they mad about? Somewhat tired. They're thirsty. And they're upset. So I'm looking at uh, um, packs. They're thirsty. So f give them something to drink. kind of watch that stuff because it's it could be interesting all right any ideas controllability zam what's up um yeah controllability for what you're right but what do you mean by that Ex expand on that elaborate what is that you're right on the right track but what is controllability what does that mean 
I mean, I know what that means, but I'm trying to say expand, right? What what could happen, I guess, is what I'm saying. At a super high flap setting, a super low airspeed. And the 737 was prone for this before they did something. Okay, it was a big beast. That barn door behind us is huge, right? But you're right on the right track. Controllability is for sure the issue. But what do you think could be that issue? Try to get an update here on weather here, folks. Give me a second. Let me pull it up. We'll get the weather for you. Mum's the word. That's Cancun. M-M-U-N. By the way, who here has seen Maverick? If you have seen it, I want to know your opinion. I've seen it once, but it was in piecemeal, right? It wasn't wasn't continuous. It was kind of chopped up a little bit. So I need to I need to see this thing from start to finish. I have my own critiques on it, but uh, I'm waiting. Uh, let's see here. Stall crosswinds. I misspelled. That's okay. I'm guessing that's okay. It might limit your yaw capabilities. I mean, these are really good stuff, you guys. Stall, take a nosedive. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right, here we go. Let me get this. Yes, this is a 727. You'll have to forgive me. Uh, my 737 is way up there, and I can't get it. Well, I could get it, but I'd have to go and climb on the chair on the table just to get it. Well, all right. You know what? I'm going to get it. We're, we're, we like to do things right here, so give me a second. Let me, let me get it. Stand by. I'm going to try to pick myself up there and get this thing. Maybe it's me then. Maybe I'm the critic. Maybe I gotta watch it again. And not through a pilot size. Alright, here we go. My 737 is all goof. Goofy. Alright, let's take a look at this thing. Let's go outside the airplane. To the back of the aircraft here. Okay, you see this big old rudder? This big old barn door here. When the aircraft gets a certain speed, and to be exact, that speed's 190 knots. Anything below 190 knots, the rudder is more effective than the aerolines. So in that particular case, so if the rudder is more effective than the ailerons, and we push rudder, okay, boom, that rudder starts to kick, is the aerolines going to help? Can the airlines flip it back up? The answer is no, we can't, because the rudder is more effective than the ailerons. Ailerons, okay, which is on the wings, which helps roll the aircraft, right? So if the rudder is bigger and greater in a slower airspeed, the airplane has a tendency, if the rudder doesn't have that dampening effect, it could be over-controlled, like you said, controllability. And if, it's too, if you slap too much rudder in, that airplane turns. In the 737, you better not touch that rudder. The only time you actually touch a rudder in the 737 is in a crosswind. That's it. You, you, you should be off the rudder, even in an upset attitude. If you need rudder, and I'm talking a little bit of rudder, it's a tap. Because you start dancing on the rudder pedals on this aircraft, you're going to be in a world of hurt because this airplane has such a big rudder 
get off the rudder. Matter of fact, every time I take off, once we're airborne, I'm off the rudder, folks. I don't touch the rudders until we're on final approach. Even in a little turn, even if I'm manually flying the airplane in turns, it's not a Cessna. Thing doesn't fly like a Cessna. It doesn't act like a Cessna. Okay? Because of the rudders so big, don't get on the rudders. You know, it's one of those things that they teach you early flying the 737 birds. The only thing you, if you ever need rudder, it would be in a big upset. You know, maybe like this. That's what I'll say. Okay, and even then, that's not a big deal. We get in like this, just let the nose come out, roll level, unload the aircraft, pull out of the dive. So we don't need to slap on the rudder and swing it because it's such, it's so big, it causes so much stress on the airframe. So anyway, that's the problem. When you go flaps 40 or pass flaps 30, you're really slow. Like, remember, remember I said crossover speed's 190. And that's what happened to US Air 447. Okay, or is it two, 427? Something like that. In Pittsburgh. If you remember that air, that, that, that crash was a 737 400 or 300. I think it was a 300 or 400. I can't remember. It might have been a 400. It was US Air. And they were on final approach. We're coming to turn final. Slow speed, flaps full. Um, were flaps coming down. I can't remember if they were flap 15 at that point or not, but they were slower than 190 knots, right? Well, there's a 727 in front of them causing wake turbulence, and the airplane was hitting turbulence, okay? A little bit of turbulence because of the wake. Okay, and all of the sudden, the airplane goes from this to this. The rudder goes hard over on them, and I'm talking that barn door in the back of this aircraft just completely goes BAM like that. And the airplane went like this, swung the tail out, and dove them. Okay? So what do the pilots do? You know, the pilots slam opposite rudder, and it's not moving. Okay? So the rudder is jammed. Okay? The only thing that can save you at that point is two things. Altitude, airspeed. If you have the altitude, roll the airplane over, dive the airplane, it's going to get more airspeed than 190 knots, and you can actually get control back because you have aileron movement now, okay, and you can pull that dive out, but it would be massive. You'd have to have a lot of altitude, and folks are only about 4,000 feet. They didn't have the altitude to recover. Um, those, those poor pilots had no chance of saving that airplane, okay, so it ended up being a smoking hole in Pittsburgh. It was a disaster. You know, as a tragedy. Uh, a lot of people died. Everybody died on that airplane. It was it was bad. Really bad. Um, the PCU, the power control unit, back in the rudder, that's what the, the PCU is basically a power control unit. That sends hydraulic pressure to the rudder. And what happened was it hard it went hard over. And there was two other accidents. A United Airlines, a 737-200, Bought the farm, same thing, over the Colorado Springs, hit turbulence, less than 190 knots, the airplane just rolled, boom, came right over the top and landed. Um, they thought it was maybe a, a freak, you know, turbulent plot or something like that that they hit, and they, they thought it was wind shear that did them in. This was years ago, in the 80s, they couldn't figure it out. All right, and then there was an east wind, 737-200, flying at cruise altitude, and sure enough, BAM! The rudder kicked in, and it started hard over on him, okay? This guy had the altitude, and he had the airspeed, okay? So then the airplane started to roll like this again, and he immediately slapped the hard opposite thrust, okay? Because you've got a lot of power on this wing, okay? So if the airplane's rolling this way, push that power up on the left engine. What does that do? It's going to pull that, that wing up. It's going to give you asymmetrical thrust and want to pull the airplane this way. Okay, so again, more power on that, less power on this, the airplane's going to want to turn. So when the airplane's like this, he pushed this throttle up. He, again, slammed on the rudder, wouldn't budge. But as he pushed that throttle up, he pushed the nose down to get what? To get his Q up. By the way, Q is airspeed in mathematics. So he's got to get his Q up. Gets his Q up. He's got all this thrust on this engine and was able to roll out of that dive. And the airplane, bam, the rudder kicked back in. That's how they found what happened. Um, that and another thing, 
that um, that happened was this PCU. What they did was they put a, a, a PCU in a bucket of hydraulic fluid, and they they hooked it up to all these electrodes and they started running it. They just started pumping hydraulic fluid through it. And it was doing cycles back and forth, left and right. So this PCU, again, think of the PCU as, as two pistons. Yeah, picture's worth a thousand words. I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to draw it for you because it's just it's easier. Right? I mean, I'm sitting there dancing around my hands, but you can't really tell what's going on until... And I don't know if this is going to be any better, but it might be. Right, so you've got this PCU here, and you've got two pistons that come out like this. All right, just like that. Okay, and they each one comes in, the other goes out. So it's like this. All right, so uh, an electric electronic signal comes in here. You have hydraulic fluid that gets routed through here. Okay, so you have hydraulic fluid coming in, and it goes through a series of hydraulic pistons. Okay, so that's going up, that one's coming back, and it's just back and forth stuff, okay? That's called a PCU, power control unit. All right, so that PCU, they started running it, and it was going through like 10,000 cycles with no problem. And then finally, they said, they get a call from this east wind, and they said, we got a problem, we were up here, bam, the airplane started to do this stupid thing, What's going on? And then the NTSB investigator, I think it was Halter was his name, he said, well, how old's that airplane? And he said, the airplane's old. You know, obviously this is a 737-200, this is in the 90s, so he says it's an old airplane. And so he said, well, I got an idea. Let's take that same PCU, and what kind of hydraulic fluid are we running through? Well, clean. All right, let's take that hydraulic fluid out, and we're going to run this hydraulic fluid with dirty fluid now. So they taped it up and they started running bad hydraulic fluid, contaminated hydraulic fluid, metal shavings in it. Bad. You know, just contaminated. It's called contaminated fluid. And guess what? Guess who gets the call? He gets a call early in the morning and said, from Boeing, and said, you got to come down here and take a look at this. So he comes down there, he looks at, at the PCU, and guess what, folks? You guessed it, the PCU was jammed. All right, so this PCU here was in. Jammed up. So you had a PCU here like this, was in, and this one was jammed out. Wouldn't, and wouldn't budge, it was humming, like that. Just locked. And there's a locking mechanism in here that locked it because of the dirty hydraulic fluid. That's what brought the, all those airplanes down, was the PCU. So there's a gremlin in this aircraft, and they fixed it but by putting two PCUs in it, and two, it was only one um, valve switch. They actually put two valve switches in the aircraft now. Um, or, or locks, so it's like an anti-lock thing, um, but they put two of them. So it, it won't go I, I forgot how they fixed it, but they fixed it be basically saying that if it locks and jams, the valve will open and allow the fluid to shoot out or something like that. So they had to replace all the PCUs. So they they, they picked they, they the power transfer units were were um, or PCUs were were taken out and replaced. Isn't that interesting? I find find that very interesting, obviously, because my background is in aviation safety. So for me. That was really an interesting, and it took them four years to get to that point, so. Just landed right on the marks, 110 feet, woo. All right, all right. I've seen the movie, I've seen it too in the movies, and bought the movie and watched it 10 times. My opinion's one of the best I've seen. I just touched with the first one, and the jet scenes were fabulous, yeah. Push us down, I can't recover. Yeah, Maverick is great. I've seen it twice. Okay, I read that. All right, so we have some competition. You landed on the marks. All right, the pressure is on. Good. You put it down on the marks. So we're going to have to do the same thing. 
competition zone, folks. We're going to have to put it on the touchdown zone. And that's pretty good. 110. Where were you caught in the grass? You had to be low. <laughs> you were doing a duck under, weren't you? There's no way you couldn't. All right, let's take a look at our... Um, I hope that was interesting to you and, and why, you know, that, that rudder yacht amper deal. See, those are fun when you're at cruise altitude and you got nothing to do. That's what you do. You talk systems. All right, what happens if X, Y, or Z should occur, right? Most pilots just sitting there yapping about the wind and yapping about the, the, the news. It's really good, though, to actually focus on the systems of the aircraft and say, okay, well, we're flying to Cancun. What are the threats and, and stuff like that? All right, we're passing waypoint ODOC. ODOC? ODOC's coming in. Let's see what we've got here on the paperwork. So we got 13.2. Let's take a look at our release and find out if the release is close or not. ODOC is right there. Let's take a look. Um, according to our paperwork, we should have 12.8, but we're going to have actually 13.2 in the tanks. So we are burning more favorable than our dispatch. So what I like to do is write, yeah, screw that up. Write 13.2 in here just to let us know that we're, that's too thin, that we're doing a, a pretty good job on the burn. This aircraft does fantastic on the burn as well. So 13.2. Point two is, is hooked up. We're good to go with it. Got about 223 miles to the top of descent. I'm actually going to jump ahead of this a little bit, get ahead of the curve, and start planning right now with you. Because last time in the MD-80, we didn't plan. Well, I planned late, and it got I got caught. Um, and I I'm, honestly, we had to do a go around on that because the landing it was just so unstable. I couldn't keep it up. Um, so let's go in and plan. Let's and look at this really quick. Let's take a peek at the arrival in there. We're going to go Vamar and look at the weather here. And while the weather's in there, I'm going to give you an update on what we've got. Folks, right now, 84 degrees, 7 miles visibility, few clouds, it's 1,500 feet. So, low, kind of low scuds. we got a broken layer at 25,000, so really great. Again, 84 degrees, and we're looking just about 40 minutes to touchdown. So let's go ahead and get ready and get going on the descent here. All righty then. Let's go ahead and drop in. Let's take a look at our legs page. Up good. Vomar, 280 on the speed, 25,000 to 28,000. Then we've got Agnix, 280, 24,000 feet. Then we've got Epnel, 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 Ep, Epnel, 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 I don't know, Epnel, I'm going to say, 250, one, eight, uh, 25, 250 on the speed, 18,000 to 20,000 range, then we've got Odlar, Odlar from 12,000 to 5,000, I want to break off there, it's going way too fast on the other side, this is uh, our nav arrival, 30 left. I don't want to do that. We're going to go 2-2, two, two, so I'm going to actually change this up, folks, because this runway is not the correct arrival for this runway. So let's see what we can do in terms of the runway. That's not what I want. So I'm going to go 12 left. If I can find out 12 left, that would be fantastic. Let's see what we got. So runway 12 left. Let's look at our procedures here. Let's look at our arrivals. 12 left. See, it's going to kick us over there. Well, you don't want that. Um, I'm just trying to make sure that we're good to go because I don't want to get stuck again. I don't like that arrival. It doesn't look like it's going to help us any. So, let's see what we got. 
What a rival should we have? Vomar arrival. Well, I've got the Vomar hooked up, but we're definitely going to be kicked off here. Looking, uh, looking at us on the map, don't know if we're able to separate fast enough if we don't slow soon. Yeah, I'm on 22-8, buddy. I'm on 22-8. Vomar. Vomar 1C. There's two Vomars here. There's Vomar 1C and there's Vomar 1A. Let's take a look at 1A and see what it's got. It's almost the same dang thing, but that's what we're going to do. Vomar 1A is the choice that I'm going to pick. So we're going to go Arrivals. You're going to go to Vomar... One alpha, we have the wrong one in. Click execute. That's why we do this. We got FNL that should dump us off at Visky, and then we're going to hook up right into the arrival, into the airport. And it looks like the winds are zero at zero at eight. So one two is going to be the runway of choice. And we can hook up with the ILS there, and that's going to dump us off at Visky. So I do want that because then we can go right from Visky right here and then just f kind of feed it right in. So that's a good one to do. Oh, sorry. It's going to put us right to Visky and we're going to go to Rivals. And right, we're going to do the ILS 12 left. Transition is Cancun. No. Let's see. I want here. This is the ILS DME 12 left. Hmm. Let us. I don't like any of that. All right, let's see. Um, transitions are not the correct transitions for this one. Lettuce, Linmic, Lokma, X, D, U, no. All right, so I'm not going to do that either. Let's erase all of that. And... What the VDM? Yeah, let's look at the charts here. I'm pulling the charts really quick just because I don't like what I'm seeing. I like to actually visualize where we're going, how we're going to get there. Nope, those are two arcs. I don't want the arcs. What is that? What did I just pick? The ILS DME or Localizer 3. Alright. Let's see what that is. ILS DME Localizer 3. Let's try that. So the ILS 3, 12 left. Nope. Visky. So that's the transition we want. We're going to execute that. And I'll show you on the legs page. Load our Visky. And then we're hooked up all the way down to the track. And we'll execute that, okay? So that's really good for us. We'll go to Descent. We're going to go to Forecast. Request those winds. We'll pull those winds in. And that's going to be better for us. Because we're going to go from Visky straight up to UN. Looks like 505 for us. And then we'll get it done. Do you have to let ATC know if you change your flight plan or landing? Um, yes. If you're on ATC. The good news is we're not. <laughs> so we don't have to. I'm going to click load and we're going to go ahead and just load these winds in. And it's 2.9 or 9 or 5 for the altitude. So we're going to plug that in now. 2.9 or decimal 9 or 5. You should be a lazy pilot on the descent, folks. I mean, you shouldn't be doing much of anything on the descent. You should just monitor the aircraft. Make sure you get all your programming done now. That's kind of where you want to go. I'm just making sure we've got uh, UN 505, then we got uh, UN 528, 529, and then 532. There's our runway of choice. We're going to plug that right there. Go to the fix page. I'm going to drop that in now. Slash 15 miles. Slash 5 miles. And I do this just to increase our SA. There we go. Okay, so we're all ready to go for descent-wise, um, and that looks good. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and uh, plan auto brake 
2. I'm just going to set up auto brake 2 on this nice and light medium medium braking. Uh, we will end up rolling down the entire length of the runway pretty much because the airport it's got a high speed alpha 3 and we, we kind of want to make alpha 3 if we can make it just because it's going to be better for us to turn over uh, and just kind of exit the runway pretty quick. Boy, that's a pretty good landing, Surge. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to beat that, man. That's a pretty good landing. I'll try. <clears throat> I have a tendency of dropping the piano, though. But I tell you, it's on the mark. <clears throat> we'll see. I haven't felt comfortable in this aircraft, you know, at least in, in landing it yet. I'm still not there. It's not like P3D where I can just, wow, oh, man, I'm just, you, you, you kind of can do it blindfolded and, and get a good landing on it. I'm kidding. Not really. But still, it feels that way that, you know, you got so much time in that airplane. Um, okay. So top ascent's good. Let's go to program the, the the numbers. And I can't use, unfortunately, I can't use any anything. Um, my v virtual performance tool has got the 800 installed. Um. So I've, I've asked the developer, hey, hook me up on the 700 again. So he's going to do that, but he doesn't wake up until I'm sleeping. So we're kind of off-centered, off the clock, I guess. Uh, flaps 30, 132. We're going to plug that in there. Uh, we'll do VRF 5. It looks great. So we're going to hold 137 on our ref. How's that? We're going to land, like I said, Alpha 3. We're taxi off Alpha 3, go down Delta. And our terminal is going to be, I believe it's terminal spot 2. Yeah, it's on the other side of the airport here. It's all the way down to terminal 2. No, terminal 4. So we're going to go down Terminal 4, spot 64 for us today. So all the way down on the other side of the airport, which is really going to suck. Oh, terminal 4, we got a long taxi, folks. We'll have to taxi off Delta, go down Charlie, Charlie, all the way down to Echo 3. Gosh, that sucks. It's almost better to go, honestly, it's almost better to go Alpha 3, Alpha, across. Like, seriously, it's almost better, almost better to do that. We won't because I want to show you the bridge, but <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> Performance is in. We've got this thing nailed. Scott, what's up, buddy? <clears throat> Scott's just checking in. Out of step 427, what's up? I did a cold in the dark start on the 700 day. I got on how to do it. Good. Good, good, good. And hopefully the the training for the um, iPad is now solved. So you should be able to do that now on your iPad. Scott, hopefully we start seeing previews of the new EFB this month. It would be heavenly if they integrated it with the virtual performance tool. I have a feeling they're not going to do that. <laughs> Just for the feel. But yeah, I'm with you. Uh, I really am I'm hurting for two things. I'm hurting for a weather radar and that. 78%. I mean, these people, I've got 78% of, you got to be kidding me. Point of interest. Okay. Take a peek outside your window this morning and take in the view we have right here. There you go. That helps it. It drives up the number a little bit. Gives the passengers a little, you know. We'll be arriving early, I think. We should have you on the ground here in a few minutes. Probably about 30 minutes now, folks, until we're uh, touched down. But you already knew that, right? Top ascent coming up. It's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull that in there. I've, I'm going to go ahead and plug in some uh, numbers. 110.7.
one one zero decimal sevens in there we're gonna go ahead and plug in uh, 125 course is 125 degrees so plug that in there and our course selector yes all right 125 on the course and then we're looking at um, 22 feet so touchdown elevation is going to be 22 we're going to plug this in our, um, our borrow metric It's hard. It's hard for me to watch aviation films. It's just hard. Um, the the one that was done right, there's only two films that I know that were done really well in terms of aviation films. One of them is Miracle on the Hudson. That was done well. That's not Hollywood. That was done well. They put their own little spin on it, but it was still good. That was done well. The other one, Apollo 13. Done well. Both of my fa both of those movies have one of my favorite actors in it, though, <laughs> which is Tom Hanks, and he was great. Uh, all the Hollywood crap, I just don't like. You know, and the, one of the things I had a problem with is in Maverick is he, I was telling Pops this: you're in an F-14 Tomcat, you're in a high-speed flight. If you've ever flown the DCS F-14 Tomcat. They've done a really good job on that aircraft, the heat alert. Okay, it flies like it should. He unsweeps the wing, which you can do, by the way, going high high speed flight. He did, you know, you can you can disengage the auto sweep and unsweep the wing. So he goes from swept back wing delta wing to, uh, you know, standard wing formation, and then he pulls straight back on the stick, pulls G's. Well, on that aircraft going that speed and pulling that much up you'll rip the wings right off that aircraft those wings are not meant to be to be auto swept out at a high speed like that that's why they're they sweep in so no that another stupid thing is when they're inverted and they go like this and they start corkscrewing down I'm like that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen that would never happen fifth generation fighter they wouldn't even see the dang thing before they got shot out of the sky that's how that's how good these like an F-35 guys can lock on 200 miles away, fire a missile, and it's gone. It's called fire and forget. See ya. <laughs> that's how a fifth generation fighter would be. So I had a hard time with it. There's a hard again. I'm looking at the eyes of a pilot going, "Come on, <laughs> no, wrong, 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 wrong." Um, the whole Skunk Works thing, the whole Black Star aircraft, I looked into that. That is not real. Not a real airplane. Was never going to be a real airplane. Um, they hired Lockheed to create a 3D version of an aircraft that would be cool. And it was a hybrid between an SR-71 Blackbird and an F-35 aircraft. And they said, what if we put them both together? How would that look? That's what they did. It's not a real aircraft. However, it was just like the SR-71 program, right? Because I looked at that and I said it's an SR-71, you know, just like it. Maybe a modern. It was still a cool airplane, but it's not real. Which is fine. I'm not saying that's okay. It's okay that movies take that kind of 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 um, leeway, whatever. Creative. I get that, but man, come on. There's no way you're going to do a corkscrew down the ground like that. That close. There's no way. Again, that, that one was that was tough. That, but I, again, I'm looking at it as a, in a pilot's eyes. I need to look at it in a layman's eyes and go, okay. Forget about the accuracy. Forget about all that crap. You know, how does this thing... And it just... It just there's, it's just like Top Gun. You know what I mean? So for me, they're at the beach playing with their shirts off. They're, at, You know, I was like, man, this is the same crap. That's how I felt. <laughs> it was still cool, though. Don't get me wrong. The, the F-18 shots, I think, were cool. The sound was awesome. It was cool. So I'm going to have to watch it again to give it a better review. I'm going to have to watch it straight through, okay, and not, and not be looking at it as a pilot. 
Because, like, Denzel Washington in Flight, that's the dumbest thing in the world, right? That's another movie I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. I can't watch them. But just, I just can't watch aviation films unless they're done well. And I'm talking real. I'm talking like, like Sully. Miracle on the Hudson. I, you know, that was a, that was done well. That was that movie was real. Real, real scenario. Real, um, you know, through these through his interview, that's what he said. It was the nightmares of, of what the NTSB would do. Now they took a little bit of. It's a, they took a little bit of again creative uh, with the NTSB and how the NTSB was painting it. Um, no, the NTSB is not going to come at him like that. But um, so that again, I scoffed at that. And went okay, dude, no way. Uh, anyway, and the NTSB was. At the time, Sully said that the NTSB was trying to figure out why the computer said they could do it, but why yet it didn't happen. So, yeah, I mean, he was questioned like that. But again, Clint Eastwood took a little creative direction in in that a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to get off my soapbox because I could could talk about that all the time. It's got to be done right. I can't, I can't watch aviation films unless they're accurate. Well, The Final Countdown. That's another one. That movie I loved. It's accurate in terms of maneuvers, okay? So those F-14 Tomcats were correct maneuvers. Really cool. And a really cool story. They go back in 1940, which is awesome. I'm just saying, I guess what I'm saying is, if they do aviation fake, that's when I have a problem, Right? Like, they do maneuvers that would never happen in real life. Like, okay, that's not going to happen. Matter of fact, there's a fighter pilot on there just just grilling them as well uh, on YouTube. <laughs> I love the final countdown. It was a fantastic film. Pops, I'm glad you said that because I was thinking about it. Captain ACQ, what's going on? Long time no see. Maxwell, how are you? I bought the 800 for PMDG. Yes, I have. It's it's all ready to go and loaded. No, Scott, I have to get the model matching worked out. I haven't done that yet either. Um, Captain ACQ, just to let you know, I would anticipate in a couple of weeks we should be interviewing you if you're still interested in a coastal. You know, definitely, uh, I'll, I'll reach out to you. <clears throat> Don't want to spoil it. Was a reason he was able to get so close to the the Falcons without getting blasted out of the sky from hundred miles away. I have not. Gary, I have not seen that video about the, the guy who stole the Q400. Um, again, it was just one of those things where it's like, come on, guys. That, But that one was real. That really happened, which was crazy. And, don't, and like, okay, so Top Gun 1, I loved. Because, again, Top Gun 1, there was nothing that was not believable about that movie. Okay, I mean they couldn't depict MIGs because they they, it was the Cold War at that time, right? So, but all the maneuvers were accurate. Um, you know, all that stuff was accurate. But, you know, so I love Top Gun one because of that. You know, because of the accuracy of the maneuvers, the aircraft. Can an F-14 get in a flat spin? You betcha it can, and it is a bear to get out of. Um, most pilots don't. Okay, that's how hard that that aircraft is to recover from a flat spin. It is ridiculously hard uh, from a flat spin. If you have a flame out on the engine, you start getting in a roll like that, it'll start spinning on you, and you and it'll it's flat, and it's very hard to recover. Again, the F-14 Tomcat is super unstable. It is super unstable. That aircraft is not stable, and neither should it be. It's a fighter. 
Fighter fighter jets are nigh. They're, they're just not a. They're just not stable aircraft. All right, I mean, look at them. Short little stubby wings. You know, not very long. But man, that thing had power, and that's what saved the F-14 is the speed. It is super fast. Still can just just gun and run and gun on the F-14. And Scott said, "There's a reason. There's a reason why." We just say I don't want to spoil it, but there's a reason why he was able to get so close to the Falcons. They're getting blasted out of the sky. Yeah, because if if there <laughs> there would be no movie, <laughs> he'd be like missile lock, hundred miles away, for shoot and forget it. <laughs> be like, wait, what? Bam, they're done. <laughs> These new fighters, man, they have the missiles like that that can just go for for miles. You know. That's what it's called. It's it's a, it's a, sh a fire and forget missile. And it's like a, I think it's up to like a hundred to fifty miles away or something. You can lock a target and fire it. It's insane. But I'm gonna truth be told, I'm just gonna have to watch it again with different eyes, right? I did like I did like how they they put the pieces of Top Gun 1 in, they kept it kind of the same feel, which I liked. I liked that feeling of, okay, this is this is Top Gun 1, you know, the, the, the text, the, the, the music. I thought it was stupid. He got on his motorcycle and started chasing the airplane again. I'm like, come on, dude. This guy is like 50-something years old now. Really? You couldn't think of something better? Come on, like that kind of crap. Where it's like that is the cheesiest thing in the world. Don't do that again. He should be been there, done that. Okay, next thing, next chapter. A little more, a little more mature. Um, for his age, that's all I'm saying. Like, come on. It's just cheesy. That that's the word. Uh, he opens his 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 locker and he looks at his jacket. Really. And it stops for like seconds, you know. Or he's picking his. I'm like, this is the cheesiest thing in the world. That's cheesy. That jacket should have been thrown somewhere, and just rolled up and thrown somewhere. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, that was in the past. Let's we're moved on now. We're we're much mature. We know what we're doing. We've got great skill. Anyway, it's that kind of crap where I was like, man, that's just cheese ball city. Anyway, that's how I felt. I am a critic. I'm going to get off my soapbox. <laughs> the acting, I thought, was just not good. There were some parts where I'm like, what? Like the guy said, well, they're shutting down the program. I, I, I don't know. I'm just going to shut up. Cause it's just, that's how I feel about it. But again, I watched it in pieces. So I can't really tell you yet. I did enjoy it. I thought it was cool. It wasn't boring. So I will tell you that. It wasn't boring at all. All right, top percent. Let's do this. I'll tell you how I really feel. <laughs> all right, what do you say? P-51 was awesome. Yes. P-51. Uh, on the way down, the P-51 was awesome. That was a good one. Is Tom Cruise the pilot? Is he? To assist with customs at our destination, flight attendants will begin handing out forms momentarily. Please review and complete these forms and keep them with you for presentation upon arrival. Well, he is a pilot. Oh, good. So I give him a little more credit than, than that. He is a pilot, and he did fly that P-51, so good for him. He actually owns a ton of airplanes, he said. So that's good to know. That's cool. All right, a little more respect. I got a little more respect. Good. 
We'll take it. Cool. He's been a pilot since 94. That's good. All right, folks, on the way down, let's do this. Seatbelt signs coming on. Maybe. <laughs> Did it work? All right, seatbelt signs coming on. We're on our way down. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I don't want the, the second one to be better than the first one. Well, <clears throat> yeah. I like the first one, though. It's my opinion. You know, what can I say? Again... In all fairness, I have to watch it in totality. I didn't. So I got to be fair and watch the whole thing from start to finish. But that is his P-51. That's really cool. He's flying a P-51. Good for him. That's an awesome airplane, by the way. Good. That's a little more street cred. That's good. All right, 31,000 feet, seatbelts on. So what I'm going to do this weekend is I'm going to watch it from start to finish again, not little bits of pieces. How's that? I'll give it a good I'll give it a good once over again. Cuz my pops was right. He's like everybody loves this movie but you. I'm like, "Okay. Let me let me watch it again. It could be me." <clears throat> In all fairness, all right, on the descent, folks, we're hitting um, 28 to 25. We're going to drop down. And how are we doing on the weather, 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 weather? Seven miles still. I don't think anything has changed. 299 or 5 is the altitude. Scott said fishing movies. <laughs> yeah, I got one. It's called uh, a, river runs, a River Runs Through It. Yeah, that's cool. But even if, okay, even if he was, you know, I'll watch it again. We'll, we'll check it out. We'll do it. <clears throat> I will watch it in pilot size, but, you know, knowing he's a pilot now, I'm like, okay, now, now he's got some credit. We got some street cred there. And he flew his P-51, which I think is cool. I would love to fly one of those. <clears throat> Good airplane. All right, what are we looking at here? Pretty smooth, folks. We don't have any rough air at all. Okay, where are we going next week? Did anybody decide what we're doing next week? First, tell me, is it a southwest flight or is it going to be a coastal flight? Let's go there first and then we could work on destinations. Descent checklist. Here we go. Minimums are set. VRF and V target were set and noted. Auto brake as required. It's on two and recall is checked. Descent checklist is complete. Ah, uh, I dropped my chart. Hang on. All right, there we go. <clears throat> Coastal. Watch video on YouTube where it takes James Corden. I will. I'll totally do that. Field of Angels is pretty awesome too. Okay. Good fishing movies. Um, there's one. Isn't there one with George Clooney? Oh yeah, it's a perfect storm. With George Clooney in it. That was a, a really good movie. Heart of the Sea, I love. That's another great film. That's actually a true story. 
The Heart of the Sea is an interesting film. <clears throat> All right, let's see if we've got anybody on frequency here that I need to pay attention to. Just Miami Center, so. Cancun traffic, Cancun traffic, got a radio check. <clears throat> Dibs, can you hear me? Maybe, maybe not. 22,000. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more. On the star. Where are you? Where are you? Vomar. Okay, we're going to go down to 9,000 feet, folks. So 9,000 feet. Crap. I don't want to do that. <laughs> Alright, 9,000 feet's right there. I'm going to just go ahead and plug this in here. Um, Vomar 1 Alpha is what I want. And we're descending on the one alpha right now. So we got two eight zero, and we're uh, we're gonna be hitting the wrong button. I'm always hitting the wrong button here. It's, it's screwing me up. Okay, there we go. This is a fun flight for sure. Thanks, guys. Yeah, good. Close to flight to a great holiday destination. Well. Um, if we do a coastal flight, um, it might be to to bang to up to Bar Harbor. Depends on how I go this week. Yeah, you're there. Just a little scratchy. How you doing? All right, here, eighteen thousand feet. It looks like it's uh, two nine or nine or five, folks, on the temperature. Temperature is pushing 82, 84 degrees actually right now. 84 degrees, few clouds, 7 miles visibility is a little hazy. It's just a key the humidity out there. All right, 299 or 5 on the altitude. We've done that. We're going to go ahead and turn on the lights. 1, 2, 3, 4 on the fix. We're going to go ahead and turn on our... Igniters to continuous. I hope this flight was um, entertaining. If anything, and educational. You hope you learned something with uh, in regards to the Yon Emperor system and why crossover speed is so important to know and to recognize. Let's do approach checklist. Altimeters are set. Two nine 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 five. Packs on auto. Start switches are on. Approach checklist is complete. All right, we're gonna be um, at Nell at uh, between 11 and 9. I've got nine set, and let's go ahead and turn on some stuff for you here, so you can see how I botched this landing up. Surge, <laughs> he's gonna be watching this tomorrow. Going, I told you, you're gonna screw it up. VMC, it is. No, I don't want to clear it. Clear. What are you talking about? We're done. Fourteen thousand two hundred eighty knots. Let's go and take a peek out there. See what we got. I am going to record this because we're going to watch our landing. So we're going to get this recorded, okay? Because the last two times I'm like, oh, we should have recorded this. So we're going to record this one. Should do more of the explaining of different systems, okay? 
What's the difference between fly fishing and regular fishing? That's a good question. Fly fishing is all about finesse. It's all about finesse. It's it's finesse. It's a touch to it, right? It takes a lot of skill to fly fish. It's not a lot of skill to throw a rod in the water and just reel it in. That I'm kidding. But casting in a spin rod, a bait caster, sure, you got to get used to that. But fly fishing is all about touch. It's timing. You know, you're constantly, constantly moving. It's so much fun. Matter of fact, we're going tomorrow, so. I'm taking my son out. My wife wants to go where I think my daughter goes to. We all go fly fishing. So we'll probably go out to the river tomorrow and do a little fly fishing, which is fun. It's all about finesse, though, if you were wondering. It's just it's just something about it. And you could saltwater fly fish, too, especially in Australia. My gosh, you know how many cool fish you have? I think you have the... It's called the blue... Is it the blue bastard? I think they, that's what they call the fish in Australia. It's a... Or it's a blue devil or something like that. I forgot what they call it, but it's something with blue. And it is a cool-looking fish that fights like a truck. So... And then you got Perman out there. You have a lot of cool fish out there on a fly rod. Oh, man. There's nothing else like it. If you like to fish, you're going to love to fly fish. So... All right, here comes to 10,000 feet. We're going to hit the attendant notification now. Let them know that we're... Go ahead and clear that. And we're good to go. We'll start slowing down a little bit. I'll go ahead and pull my uh, charts back up here. I kind of lost my charts for a second. I'm going to drop it down to 4,000 now. 4,000 feet. Here we come. Here we go. Max, 220 knots at 4,000 feet, so we'll watch that. We are recording right now. Look at how pretty this is, folks. If you can just kind of look. It's beautiful here in Cancun. Beautiful weather. It's beautiful. Okay, we're um, a little high, so we're going to drop the speed brakes. Get the airplane coming down, huh? We have begun our final descent into your destination. Flight attendants will be passing through the cabin to collect any trash one final time. Hey, Please ensure your seatbelts are stowed and seats are in the full upright position. Please also store any carry-on items either in the seat back pocket or under the seat in front of you. Please complete all Wi-Fi related tasks and stow any larger electronics. So is that what you guys want to do next week? Is the coastal flight? I got one vote for it. Gary, I think, voted for it. So two votes. We'll do coastal next week then. How's that? Spoilers back in. We're going to be, um, old, it's called Oldler. Oldler? Oddler? Max 220 knots. 4,000. Looks like we'll get there. About nine miles to go here. 220 on the speed. Let me see. Um, it's calling for it. It's pretty, isn't it, out there? Uh, you're in the Mexico, Mexico here. This is all Mexico now. It's the Yucatan Peninsula that we're flying over.
nice and hot. 80, what did it say, 84? Not bad. Gary said we should do more of explaining the systems. We'll do that on every flight. How's that? We'll pick a system, and then we'll explain it at cruise if we have time. I'll explain one system of uh, a flight. Uh, that, that we can hopefully give you some value, right? So you're learning too, which is good. All right, we got to get to 220 knots. I'll give a call right now and say we're at Older. We're going to Visky at 4,000. Cancun traffic southwest 317. We're at uh, Odler 5,000. Expecting Vinsky at 4,000. Expecting landing 12 left. Cancun. All right, five for four. Um, I tell you what, folks, the 737 is fantastic. In terms of work management, it's nothing like the MD-80. The MD-80 is a beast. It is a hard aircraft to fly. It is tough to control. Okay, here comes the speed. We're going to level at 4,000 feet. There we go. Here comes the level off. I'm going to go ahead and switch to guns. Pun intended. Somehow we're going to have to try to make a good landing on this. So we'll see. <laughs> Stick around after the landing, after the shutdown. We'll go ahead and uh, check it out. All right, level at 4,000 at 220 knots on the speed. We're coming to uh, Vitsky. Once we hit Vitsky, we're going to go ahead and drop down to 3,000 feet after Vinsky. We're Vis, we're Vic, Vix, what? Vixky. Vic C. Vic C. I'm like all over the place. Getting into some bumps here. Some thermals were taken a little bit. Just a little bit of thermals. I'm telling you, that's one thing about this Rex weather thing. It's I don't have Rex weather on right now. You saw what it did to me before. I could turn it on now and be confident it would be okay, but this low to the ground, that's probably not smart. So I'm just going to hold this weather. Because you saw what it can do. It's not good. This is not good at all. Gary says, I'm so glad you didn't give up streaming. Well, thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. Man. And by the way, if you're a patron, I actually pause payments. So not going to be charged for October, uh, October at all. That's just because I've been concentrating so much on Coastal. I'm trying to get it out. I haven't, I haven't really put anything into you know, just doing tutorials or anything like that. And if I do a tutorial, it's probably going to be a 737 based. There was one tutorial on the different climb profiles and how we judge those or how we get those. It's going to be a quick one, but I could explain it pretty good in terms of the profiles. And that's actually done automatically. All right, folks, final descent. I'm going to turn on my track IR and hope the heck it actually locks in. I'm really hoping it does. All right, ready? Here we go. Cross your fingers. It works. All right. Sometimes Microsoft just dumps it and says, oh, yeah, you, you, your track IR is not on anymore. And it's like, that's really freaking annoying. All right, we've got 3,000 here. Then we're going to go ahead and lock it. i got to lock it again. i got to look. we got 3,000 all the way down. Okay, we're good. Here's 3,000. We're going to start rolling the aircraft in there. Cancun traffic, southwest 317 on final runway. 12 left. Cancun, probably about uh, 16 miles out. All right, missed approach. It's going to be a climb straight out. Nope, sorry. It's going to be a climbing left turn to 3,000. Direct to armpit. I'm kidding. It's not. It's direct to ampus. Ampus. Armpit. That's pretty funny. 
Alright, I heard something go so I think that's maybe traffic. Taxi! Somebody's taxiing at 12 right. That's fine. That's on the other side of the airport, so it really doesn't matter to me. There's a visual. Tally on it. We keep the speed up. And Dibs, we're keeping the speed up for you. We're doing about 220. We're going we're gonna to stay at 180 here uh, when we catch profile for you, up to 5 miles. So we'll be at 180, just so you know. Yeah, I copy. All right. I think we've got some good separation Okay, altitude going to zero. It's a south. It's a southwest thing. All right, let's go slow it down to two ten on the speed. We'll go flap up maneuvering speed. Bring the power back. Let the aircraft settle in. Click the approach. Single channel hooked up. So as you can see, we're starting to slow down. Flap coming down five. Flaps 5, slowing down to 180 on the speed. I love that sound. There's nothing like the flap sound on a 737. It's super cool. Okay, I'm going to keep my speed up for you. Landing lights coming on. Taxi lights are on. Good to go. Here comes the glide slope. Ride dog, what's up? Ride dog's in the house. Welcome aboard. You're just in time to see this goofy landing that I'm going to do. I've got some competition today. I tell you right now, I, we got to get on the mark in 110 feet a minute. That's that's going to be a tall order. I'll get it on the mark, but it's probably going to be like 210. Especially, I have to do 180 knots to, to give some separation here. No joke. How's the wind? It's 21 knots. Don't call for that. I called for seven, didn't it? What in the world? It's nine knots. Uh, nine knots when we get down there, but it's 20 knot crosswind now. Super cool, huh? All right, here we go. 2,000 gear down. Lap 15. 170 on the speed. We'll start pulling that speed down a little bit. Get that gear down there. Get all that drag out. Gear down. Three green. Flap 15. Now I'm gonna slow to 15 speed. Once we get below that caution lane, uh, amber caution line, we're going to go ahead and kick it more to flat 30. We're five nautical miles away. We're slowing down to 152. All right, here we go. One, two, set 137 on the ref. Landing checklist. Cancun traffic, southwest 305, 15 mile final, runway 12 left, Cancun. Cool. All right, before landing, speed brakes are armed, gear down, uh, three green, and flaps, 30-30 green light. Cancun traffic, southwest 317 on short final, runway 12 left, Cancun. All right, I'm going to take off, take off, I'm going to take over now, because I'm going to try to get a feel for this if I'm going to be in this landing competition. There's a 1,000 feet, we are on speed, on slope. Sink 650. Well, what are you doing, airplane? Don't dive on me. Oh, gosh. All right, let's get that back over there a little bit. There we go. All right, correcting. There we go, right 
there. Keep this up. We're going to be in the trees. Just saying. A little low, Coog. <laughs> I'm pushing the power up. I'm goosing it. You can see I'm goosing it. Challenge accepted. I see the tree. Whoa, that was a weird little dive. Check. 50. 30. 10. I don't know what that was. Speed brakes. Reversers. Get on the center line. All right, coming out of reversers. I'll get off the brakes here. It's my airplane. That's where I wanted to go. Right there. Alpha three, folks. Perfect. Cancun traffic southwest 317. Clear the runway. One, two, left, Cancun. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. The local time is 10.26 a.m. and it's currently about 29 degrees Celsius. You can now use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Cancun traffic Remember southwest 305, five mile final, runway 12 left, Cancun. We thank you for flying with us and we hope to see you again soon. I'll take this turn. Taxi lights on. How we do, folks? How was that? I couldn't tell. <laughs> you were still up. 149. You beat me. You beat me. <laughs> you got 110? Jeez. But I got to see if it was on the mark or not. It better be on the mark. Or I'm going to be very upset. Very upset if that's the case. All right, let's go to our chart here. All right, APU coming on. I can get it on. Here we go. One, two, APU's coming on. One more thing I want to do is stop the recording and see. Stop that. Oh, shoot. This heads down thing is not good. There we go. This looks very familiar, doesn't it? So we're going to have to taxi all the way down. Uh, I'm going to jump on... Uh, uh, we're actually going to stay on Charlie, so we're going to have to jump on Charlie now here. So we're going to come over here. We'll jump on uh, Bravo 5. We'll go ahead to Charlie. Cancun traffic southwest, 305 clear, 12 left, taxi into the gates via Alpha 3 Alpha. Southwest gates are on the other side, folks. If you're wondering, wondering, it's on the other side. Oh, we had two of us coming in? 
There's three of us total then, huh? All right, APU's coming online. Spot 64, folks, is all the way down, all the way down to Echo 3. Is this, a, is this a good enough taxi for you? Just flying. <laughs> Let's see, what do we got? A passengers except they expect to be arrived at uh, 37. 37 seconds or 37 minutes? 37 minutes, wow. So I'm going to tell them we're a little early. Okay, this is definitely not the right one. Echo 3 is... We gotta keep going. I'm trying to let them know that we're ahead of... Nothing. Oh, forget it. Okay, we got uh, Bravo 13, that's where we want to go. Yep, this is our gate all the way in the middle of nowhere over here. Gate 64 is going to be on the opposite end of the airport. Oh, look at that airplane. Is he taking off on the opposite end? <laughs> Where's he going? Oh, he just took off on the other runway? Uh, I don't know what he's doing. That's super weird. Uh, he's going to park us, so we're going to take this gate right here. Okay, I'm going to shut down the taxi sign. Taxi light. I'm going to shut down number two. Okay, brakes coming on. Brakes on, engines off. That's on. Seatbelt signs off. All right, seatbelt signs off. For those of you who want to stick around, you can. And we're going to show you a re little replay here and see how we did. Operate the jetway. So, this thing has a default jetway, it said. All right, all right, here we go. So I'm going to click return. Ground service is coming on. We're going to set the tracks up. Go ahead and request our ground power. We'll wait for the jetway to come online here. Hey, look at that airplane right next to me. Well, what's going on? This thing should be hooked up. We gotta get the gate on here. And then we can shut everything down. Alright, let's go ahead and pop the doors and we'll start deboarding. How's that? We'll click door, we're gonna open the door, and I'm gonna come upstairs here and take care of business. Those are off. We got ground power, hook that up now. And then we're gonna come up here. Shoot. Windows, these are off. 
That's off. Pack's coming off. It's very hot here, so we definitely need to turn on, get the uh, AC card on the aircraft. You've opened the door. We're going to come down here. We're going to request the air conditioning unit. We will request uh, zero passengers now. They're going to start deplaning. That's what I want. And then let's call up GSX and get there going. Let's get the uh, power on there. Airplane though, that's up. Right, let's turn the APU off. APU is off. That's off. Those are all off. All right, let's go outside and call GSX. Let's see if we can get it to work. Request deboarding. Deboarding requested. Yes, it, it is requested. Watch, it's gonna pull the jetway out for some stupid reason. So what's it doing here? I don't know why it's doing that. Whoa, what are we doing? Okay, hold. So that was weird. <laughs> Let's end the flight before it uh, says, you stink. Do you hear this? <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is get rid of whatever that sound is. Okay, we'll go to the main menu. That should stop. There we go. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. It was like, it was just weird enough. Jason, is that the fault? No, that is not the fault. I um, I have, um, I have. Oh shoot! I gotta go and say, uh, pirate. What are you talking about? Okay, hopefully it. I'm just gonna log in to Cancun. I'm just going to sit in Cancun here with the aircraft, um, and hopefully I can log back into the uh, ACARS program. So I'm just going to like this. I'm going to click fly. Just hold on a minute. Let's see if ACARS can, we can trick ACARS to, to saying it was a flight, because that's going to really suck if I can't, you know, book that flight. I'll have to go and do it manually, which I'm just terrible at. And I click ready to fly. All right, let's see if we can get ACARS to work here. Oh, gosh, it's not going to do it, is it? No. See, it says 215. Why can't I file the PIREP? Well, let me go in the uh, flight deck here and make sure the brake's on. Because that could be the issue. Let's see if we can get this thing to trick. No, you stupid thing. It unlocked again. No, it didn't. Okay. Let's see if we can get ACARS to trick, trick ACARS system here. Thinking. Ah, oh, come on. Really? Freaking really? I want to try to refresh it and see if it takes it. Oh, that sucks. All right, you know what I'm going to do, though? So my off and out times are zero, zero, zero. Oh, well. I'm going to have to uh, file it manually. Sucks. Yes, I'm sure I want to quit. All right, let's watch. If you want to stick stick with me, we're going to come out again. We're going to put this thing on the runway, and we'll watch the landing one more time. We'll watch the landing, I should say. Only takes a second. 
we'll see kind of where we put this thing down on. All right. Uh, we'll increase our time to, you know, maybe it was like one o'clock ish and uh, we'll put it on the runway because then we can do that. Uh, the engines will be running. So 702, I don't want 702. We came in about two o'clock or something like that. All right. I'm going to click fly and then we'll go in and check out where we touch down in our landing. I'm off. Make sure when you do this, you're off of that sim and I, I'm disconnected. So I want to make sure I'm disconnected from that sim and the whole nine yards because that would be really bad. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. There we go. All right, let's go and do this thing. September... Pause it. And we'll play it right there. Let's we'll see what we got. Let's go outside, huh? Have a look there. What? Oh, that's this one. Okay, I'm gonna go. Fast forward it as well. All right, let's get the flaps in there because it just looks cool. Hang on. Positive rate of climb. All right, flaps set. Let's get back outside. Okay, I'll fast forward it now. We're all set and ready to go here. I want to see how close I came to those trees. <laughs> Looks are deceiving, right? All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a we're gonna slow it down to 25 percent. Go slow, slow mo. How's that? Look at this tree. That was nice and close. This is a slow mo we're running this thing at. Remember, it's where you touch down, right? So we're gonna we're gonna check that touchdown and where we put this thing down today. Holy smokes, look at how low I am right now. That's low. I mean we're gonna be taking off the antenna soon. Your camera's out. I'm gonna pause it. I'm gonna touch down. Okay, so I'm at idle power. Okay, so that's re <laughs> we touch down about right there. Just, just right there. 
Well, that's a pretty cool picture. If you can get a good picture of that. All right, let's reverse it a little bit. Well, it says the boards are out because of, like, you got to go back in like that. That's how you. All right, one more. There we go. <laughs> and we'll play it real time. About right here. Let's go. Real time. Here we go. Normal speed. Nice. Good stuff. The landing rate, three thousand. Look, we got zero. Okay. Well, that's it. All right, folks. What I'm gonna do is just stop this right here. That was fun. Okay, Serge, you beat me. You did good. Anyway, um, next week, by the way, if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Um, next week, we'll fly a coastal flight. I don't know where I'm going to be. I'm, I'm probably going to be going from Miami up to LaGuardia, then up, up to our uh, Bar Harbor, and I don't know where we'll end up. So I can't, I don't know. Like I can't, I can't predict. But you should know by Thursday next week where we're going to go. Okay, it'll be a coastal flight. It'll be in the 737. I just don't know what destination yet. Alrighty, but thanks for watching, and uh, you, you folks have a great rest of your week. Remember, hit that like button. It helps the channel out a lot, and have a great Labor Day. Until next time, keep the blue side up and the brown side down. We'll see you.